Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. Trinidad and Tobago has a date for the arrival of COVID-19 vaccines. This story takes the lead in our 1079th edition of Caribbean Perspective for Tuesday 30th March 2021. Details after this break. Did you know that your friends and family can now shop at the food fair from anywhere in the world and you can receive here in Grenada? The food fair and GrenadaMarket.com now make it possible through secure online shopping and personalized customer service. Simply send your loved ones a list of your preferred items or let them fill an online basket and the items will be available for pickup or delivery. Visit GrenadaMarket.com or thefoodfair.gd today for more details. The new norm. Spread the news. Welcome back. Trinidad and Tobago's first tranche of vaccines from the COVAX facility is in transit from South Korea and the government is eyeing April 6th as the date to begin the country's vaccination rollout. Minister of Health Terence Dial Singh has revealed the plan for the national rollout. Here's TV6's Alicia Boucher with more in this report. South Korea to Brussels, to Amsterdam, to Miami, and then to Trinidad and Tobago. That's the route the country's first tranche of 33,600 AstraZeneca vaccines from the COVAX facility is presently on, according to Minister of Health Terence Dialsing. The current estimated date of arrival, current, uh, please, because many things can happen. The current estimated date of arrival is Tuesday the 30th at 6.10 p.m. Once the vaccines are here and we are in receipt of them, we are splitting the shipment into two. Half will be stored at C40 um, in Chagaramas and half will be stored at the Kuva Chiller, which is brand new, which we just built. The intention behind it is to add an additional protective layer in the event that any mishap occurs at one site, not all the country's vaccines would be compromised. So we start on Tuesday the 6th um, with the national vaccination rollout program. Minister Diel Singh says distribution would take place across 21 sites in TNT, where all frontline medical staff, which he states is around 5,000 persons, would be top priority. Simultaneously, we will start to vaccinate those persons over 60 in our non-communicable diseases clinics in the public health care sector. Those persons are already known to us and they will be vaccinated on their clinic days. Okay, So if your clinic days are Monday and you go to that health center, you will be vaccinated. But outside of those who attend clinics, Minister Dial Singh says, members of the general public would be facilitated once they fit into the at-risk group being targeted. Over 60 again with NCDs, but by appointment only. So each, so in the coming days, all this information will be disseminated. When you get your vaccination, we are asking people to walk with your existing vaccination card so we could record that you have in fact received your first shot. It would also contain a reminder of the date for the second shot. Appointments for COVID-19 vaccination would be done online or via telephone and also by visiting your district health center. The plan is expected to use up this first tranche, which would see 16,000 persons vaccinated. Alicia Boucher, TV6 News. Meantime, two sets of holidays are on the horizon. But if you plan to gather or otherwise act in breach of the public health regulations, Prime Minister Keith Rowley of Trinidad and Tobago says you risk being arrested. Alicia Boucher again has more in this TV6 report. Taylor made for disaster. That's how Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley refers to the upcoming holidays if the COVID-19 regulations are not adhered to. Dr. Rowley says he understands that citizens may be frustrated after enduring more than a year under restricted conditions, but he's asking the population not to get wary and drop the ball. However, he's not leaving compliance only in the hands of the public amid the present spike in COVID-19 cases. And today, 
given the importance of this situation, I will publicly call on the police in the what aspect to do their jobs with enthusiasm, greater enthusiasm, to take us beyond the threats of the coming days. Other than wearing a face mask in public, you are not allowed to gather in a public space in a group of more than 10, except for certain regulated places like churches. Everybody of adult age in this country should be able to count. If you find yourself in a group of more than 10, just understand that you are in an arrestable situation. Furthermore, he says he has signed a document which would allow the judiciary to facilitate the payment of tickets. It has factored in an extended time frame, so persons who were ticketed in the past would still be required to pay. The police are said to have issued over 7,140 tickets to members of the public for breaking the health regulations so far. The Prime Minister has also commented on an event where the Attorney General was present and in close proximity to other people, but without a face mask on. My comment on that is that um, that is disappointing because, as I said earlier on today, I expect every person in a leadership position in this country to demonstrate that leadership wherever you are or whenever you are out. Dr. Rowley is further calling on all leaders to influence their followers to make the right decisions in the upcoming days and weeks to ensure that the country is not placed in danger and that millions of dollars don't end up being wasted. Well, it is your football club, the Queen's Park Club, the Presbyterian Church, the Mahasabha. If you are in a leadership position, we are in this fight together. And I make that up. Dr. Rowley says, despite what some may think, TNT is very much still in the middle of a pandemic. Alicia Boucher, TV6 News. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. St. Lucia's National Security Minister, Herman Gil Francis, says high-profile people in society are profiting from criminal activity. Gina Felipe of HTS News Force reports. National Security Minister Herman Guild Francis has declared that prominent persons are recruiting gang members to carry out their dirty work. Francis spoke on crime during an appearance on a UWP media platform on Friday. He claims that prominent figures provide firearms to gangs to execute unlawful acts. There is, you know, there is a, a, a sense of fear because, like I said, the, the, the gangs have, have gotten so powerful. They have the money. And, wow. and, and, and Champagne, you, have, you, you don't be surprised. There are big people in this society. That's one thing that Kenny Anthony said that's correct. Mm -hmm. There are people that benefit from crime in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. Wow, we know that. Okay, so they give the young fellas the firearms, they give the gangs firearms, and the fellas don't do anything that they want. So if you speak too hard to a particular um, individual in society, he'll tell you, don't worry, man, I'll take care of you. And he goes, he speaks to his boys, and the fellas will come and take care of you. It's a fact. Francis cites a lack of passion for the job as one of the factors behind the disrespect for law enforcement authority. He threw his support behind the police, urging them to adopt a more assert posture in tackling crime. The police have to take charge, and you have to have a government that will back you up. Okay, and I've said that to the, to, to the police. As long as you do it in the correct way, this minister will stand with you. Mm -hmm. I've said to the police, I want to see you harassing these fellas. Mm -hmm. You harass them that. in such a way mm -hmm. that they go to their lawyers. That's yeah. what a police officer does. Is Part of your job is to go to court. Okay, we have an attorney general who will take care of the, the, the cases for you. Yeah. Okay, and if they convict you, is the state that's going to pay? Not you, the money not coming from you. The money is going to come from the state's pocket. So do not be afraid to challenge people. Do not be afraid to have the roadblocks. Do not be afraid to, whenever you see fellas stand up in a corner, idly by, to go to them. The National Security Minister also touted the reduction in crime last year. He is also ready to update the business community on the crime stats. Our crime rate is 25% below 2020. 
25 percent wow. mm -hmm. okay and that's crime overall overall yes and, and, and that's what we do every monday the commissioner um the prime minister myself and other persons who work with my prime minister's office mm -hmm. they're lawyers and they come in and we we, we, we interrogate the commissioner mm -hmm. as oh, to boy. what is happening why is that happening yes oh, what okay. are your plans how can we assist you Mm -hmm. And then he gives us a synopsis of everything, mm -hmm. and then we decide how we can assist him. Okay. So every week he has to, and then there's a gentleman who prepares the the the, um, the crime statistics, mm -hmm. and this is sent out. Okay, mm -hmm. I have promised the Chamber of Commerce that I will share it with them because I think they're a good partner, and they will assist us when the time comes if we need certain things. Francis observed that law enforcement needed a boost in manpower and vehicles to enhance their capabilities. He disclosed that the cabinet has been working hand in glove with the high command of the police force to devise strategies to curb crime. Gina Filippi, HCS News Force. Over in Guyana, the APNUAFC says it condemns the PPP government's attempts to dismantle the guardrail of democracy through the Public Accounts Committee, the PAC. Find out more in this report from HGP's Wendell Badri. In a statement dispatched to the media on Thursday night, the party proffered that the most recent attempt to derail democracy resides in an attempt to erode the meaning and spirit of Standing Order 82-2 of the National Assembly, which grants the main opposition the right and power to select the chairman of the Public Accounts Committee, PAC. While reminding that scrutiny of spending and of all other financial matters demands impartiality, the party stated that a chairman from the opposition, appointed exclusively by the main opposition party, is fundamental for such impartiality. Continuing in its condemnation, the APNU AFC described it as despicable that the method being utilized by the PPP to get rid of this entrenched norm is rooted in the demands to remove the duly appointed chairman, David Patterson, via a no-confidence motion while reiterating that the lawful selector of the chairman of the PAC is the main opposition. The party further contends that the attempt to remove Mr. Patterson as chair of the PAC is what is timing the work of the committee, and further, that it is not who the government finds unfit and improper, but who the main opposition finds fit and proper, noting that what is happening to Patterson today could happen to the remainder of the committee members in the future. The party statement follows advice which was recently tendered to the Speaker of the National Assembly, Sherlock Isaacs, by attorney at law, Kevon Bess, who reasoned that if the opposition members of the committee continue to refuse to take up the chairmanship position, then the government members of the committee could appoint one of its own temporarily, so as to not hinder the work of the committee. The attorney reasoned, however, that the permanent position is to be held by a member of the main opposition. Bess submitted his reasoning based on two rules of litigation the narrow literal rule, and the mischief rule. The mischief rule favors the government side of the committee, while the literal rule favors the opposition side. Wendell Badry, HGP Nightly News. Last year was great. This year will be better. Data, internet, drinks, groceries, fuel, cooking gas, electricity, savings account, Property of Vehicle Insurance, Hubbard's Promotion, coming soon. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.